Hey guys, we are doing a full painting in today's video. This is a bigger project. This one took me a long time, and this is the one that I had been hinting about in my last video. I am really pumped about this. But while you watch this speed paint, I'm gonna talk about something very applicable to both you and me. What am I talking about? We are discussing art goals in today's video. So the new year recently came up and a lot of people are talking about their resolutions. I'm not the type of person to make new year's resolutions. I'm just the type of person that constantly makes lists of goals, whether they are realistic or not. But I have been assessing that, let's just say, and I realized I need to make healthier goals. So today's video is going to focus on how to make healthy goals, and I'm gonna share mine with you. But before I delve into my vulnerabilities, I just want to encourage you to feel like you can be vulnerable too. We are a safe art community. So if you want to share your goals down below for whatever reason, maybe you want people to encourage you, feel free to jump in and encourage other people, let them know that they can do it, because we are a community. But sometimes just sharing your goals holds you accountable, which is healthy too, I think. So yeah, feel free to share your art goals below. I want to know what your art goals are, and I'm going to share mine. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to kind of briefly go over some advice on setting up healthy art goals. So yeah, I have to admit I am very guilty of setting unhealthy goals where I overwork myself and I don't give myself chances to rest and I burn out. That is what has led me to doing this. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll notice that I've been kind of poking around on the goal topic and like asking people to share their art goals. This is because this is something that's been going on in my head for a long time. So I have, let's see, about 11 art goals that I may or may not share in this video. But the first one, okay, let me just put a disclaimer. I am applying a lot of these goals in this painting. So yeah. First one, draw people from the neck down. Stop being afraid of anatomy and try to draw bodies more. So here we do, here we do, what, what, what? <laughs> here we are, we are drawing arms, we are drawing hands. These two things scare me. We are also drawing half of a body because compositionally speaking, I did not feel it would be appropriate to draw the full body for what I envisioned, but I am very proud of just delving into that. We drew a person from more than just the neck up. I'm very happy about that. So that's my first goal. Second goal, draw backgrounds. I seem to avoid this because I feel like my ability to develop a not awkward composition is like lacking and I'm going to get rid of that. I am going to obliterate that goal this year. I actually found that working on this background was quite stress relieving and I enjoy it. So I think making that a goal was a very good decision for me to finally stop being afraid of backgrounds. I also want to delve back into realism. I want to do more gestural drawings and still life studies. This is because I really enjoy doing realism when I'm not doing YouTube. I really like to practice those things and stay on top of them because doing those little practices and studies really develop your skills as an artist. So if you kind of feel stuck, maybe jump into a different style and do that. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm kind of excited for that, to be honest. It gives me an excuse to get new colored pencils too, because realism, yeah. I also want to play with more cohesive color palettes and keep things simple, which is what I'm doing in this picture here. You will see me working the piece as a whole and repeating a lot of colors all over the place. So I'm using a lot of softer colors. I wanted to keep it toned down just a little bit because we're doing plants and I just felt like it lined up more with all the earthy things. Felt really great. Let me know what your favorite color palettes are for your artwork. Are you a really bright colored person? Do you do muted colors or what? 
What is your favorite color scheme? Let me know. I also want to delve more into oils. I want to sell my artwork and stop feeling guilty about promoting myself because I put a lot of work and effort into my artwork. It is what I do for a job. I should not feel guilty getting paid for what I do. I have to keep a roof over my head like everybody else. Why do I feel guilty about that? Yeah, so I need to get over that. The next thing, I want to make more art for me. It doesn't need to be stuff that I show, but it is stuff that makes me happy. Now this is the kind of artwork that I would do for me off camera. So, uh, yeah, I just love plants. That's all I have to say. Tell me your favorite plant down below. I have lots and uh, I don't know if I can pick a favorite at this point, but a lot of the things in this picture, like that snake plant, I really like. Um, Birds of Paradise leaves are really pretty. I like succulents and air plants a lot. Getting off topic, back on topic. Okay, I need to rest when it's needed. I want to collaborate more. But my vision of collaborating is like product illustration, biological illustration, and perhaps designing book covers. But the whole book cover thing stresses me out because I have like zero interest in illustrating somebody's book, like a children's book, because I would rather do that for my own storylines. And uh, every time I mention book covers, I get told like, oh, you should illustrate my story. And I really just don't want to do that. So I have to learn how to say no better this for the next while as well. That's something I need to work on because I have some storylines and I want to develop my own children's book eventually. Anyway, those are my goals. A lot of them are short-term goals, but a lot of them are a mix of long-term goals. So now comes the time for me to give you advice on art goals. If you want it, you don't have to take it. It's all relative, really. But I encourage you to make goals that make you feel uncomfortable. It helps you to grow as an artist, whether you realize it or not. When you look back, I think you will. And if your goals make you uncomfortable and they don't turn out okay, and you completely regret it, that's okay because you probably learned something. That brings me to my next point. You should make goals that kind of make you feel like you're developing your skills more. Not all of your goals have to be pertaining to this, but if you kind of don't know where to start with making goals, you can think to yourself like, huh, what will make me improve as an artist? So that's kind of what I had in mind when I developed a lot of my goals. The next thing, you should make goals that are realistic. For instance, if you're just starting out and you're a new artist, don't make a goal like, ooh, I'm going to learn hyper-realism within the next three days, and then I'm going to learn how to like illustrate stuff in Adobe Illustrator and crank out my own children's book within the month. That is so unrealistic. So uh, make sure you set realistic goals and stuff like that would be long term. That way you don't get down on yourself. You need, you need to have little victories here and there. And if you set unrealistic goals, you might get really discouraged and burn out. And we don't want that. We want you to love what you do. So yeah, it's really healthy to set goals that are obtainable and realistic. You also may want to consider goals that affect your skills, but they don't have to mean that you're hovering over your art desk and practicing for hours. What I mean is take it away from the art for a little bit. It's healthy to give yourself a break and allow your mind to grow. So like when you're out and about, maybe you're at the mall and you're people watching or something, study the way that shadows fall under people as they walk or look at the way the light comes across certain objects, um, that kind of stuff, or even like placement of certain things to study composition. That is the stuff that you can actually take from the real world and come back to your art and apply it, which is so cool. And I think it's very healthy because as I said, it gives your hands time to rest, but your mind is still active. I think this one isn't talked about a lot, but it definitely ignites a lot of new inspiration for me. 
I really love doing this when I am hiking or I am in places that inspire me. So just my little tidbit. Another thing I would suggest not making goals solely for the purpose of pleasing others because again it could lead to burnout and we want you to be happy. We want you to love what you do. So yeah, make small goals and big goals. Those small goals are important because you need little victories to like keep you going, keep you wanting to do more art. But those long goals, like whew, when you cross that thing off the list, man, what a victory. How awesome. Anyway, the most important thing is goals that make you happy. So let me know if you have any of the same goals as me, and we can be little twinsies. But I hope that you have healthy art goals and goals that make you feel fulfilled. Anyway, keep doing what you love, and thank you so much for watching. Have a good day, guys. Bye.